for the the lens that malware writers will go to be able to obfuscate uh, the code. So this is a an email I received. So it's got a, a, a zip file. If you actually look at the details of the email, then it really doesn't give you too much, uh, too many clues as to really where it was sent from. Okay, but if we actually open up the, the zip file, this is this is what we get here. So we actually see within inside the zip file, uh, it's obviously got through the mail scanner within inside the zip file. We actually see a piece of JavaScript. So what will happen here is that if we were to run this, it would run it within a browser, uh, and then it's obviously going to try and exploit the machine. So if we actually view the file, this is what we get. And you can see here, it just makes no sense at all. You can see a lot of garbled uh, JavaScript there. So this is very typical of uh, an obfuscated piece of, of JavaScript. So what we'll do is we'll have a little look at it. So we'll just paste it into, uh, in this case it's Visual Studio. There's no line breaks, this is a very typical thing for uh, an obfuscator to do. So it makes it very difficult for us to actually view it in, in, a, in an editor. So if you wanted, we could view it in WordPad, say. And that's what it looks like. Okay. Uh, so there's some extra characters here. So for example, this is coming through as, as a reserve character. So typically that would be ampersand and there for that. Okay, but that's the code. And there's no way that uh, any sort of scanner will be able to make sense of that. So what we'll do next is that uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take it and we'll, we'll put our line breaks in and then maybe we can make some sense of it, okay? So you can actually see that uh, we have a whole lot of functions there and there's the functions and the functions are basically all scrambled in a different order. That makes it even more difficult. But if we look down here, it's going from 1 to 200, 237 and actually printing them out. All that's really doing is it calls up the function and then prints that character, that uh, string there. Okay, so that's all that it's doing. So if we try and find the first one, okay, there's the first one that we've got. If we search for it, then we get that. And then the second one is that third one is that and so on. If we keep going down then here's what we get and that's the sequence number. So what I've done is I've reordered them again. Okay so this is from 1 to 237. So I've taken them uh, and then I've laid them out in their sequence there. Okay there's the last one there. Okay, so after this, what I've done is I've just written a little program that will take away the numbers there at the start. And this is the text that we end up with here. So this is the text that will actually appear within the browser. So what we need to do now is to be able to get rid of the line breaks and to build the back end. So the code that we end up with is this code here. Okay, and... Uh, what we can see from here, there's a few extra spaces and, and so on that have been added, but we should be able to make some sort of sense of it from, from here. And basically what we have is that uh, we actually have a number of uh, domain uh, names here, because what happens is that we split them with a space and so whenever we have a space, then it will load an, into the B array. So B0, B1, and B2. So in this case, what will happen is that there will, there will be a get uh, sent for this document here with a certain random number that's actually created. Okay, so those are the three domains or the three addresses that, that are really pinpointed with inside this uh, this piece of malware. And what really happens is that it's using an ActiveX uh, component for uh, Internet Explorer. And it will create a random uh, document on the on the disk and then use that to uh, exploit uh, the, the device. 
Okay, so you can actually see it's quite it's quite difficult to to make sense of it. So what we're typically doing now is to be able to run the actual run the device in an isolated environment. So what I've done here is I've captured the network traffic that happens without it actually doing a, a call to to the remote site. So what we want to do is to be able to uh, look at our HTTP request and we see that it did a, a get. So we'll have a look at the get and there we go. Okay, so here are the here is the call to the to the remote website. You can see there's the random number there. There's a random number and then there's the ID that it's actually sending. If we go back to our code again. Okay, so there we go, ID. There's the value of stroke. That's obviously getting set uh, somewhere in the in the program. Okay, so you can see there. There we have. Okay, so so you could see that from the original text that we have. There's no way that uh, any scanner can really make any sort of sense of that, especially the way it's scrambled that completely in its sequences uh, and it's completely mangled. And then it ends up we have something a bit more simple, such as such as this one. Okay, so you can see uh, some of the methods that are actually used to obfuscate uh, malware.